The news at 530 starts right now. Well, we got to start off talking about that crazy weather we had last night. I don't know. We were just talking about this. The storm was so loud, so much lightning. A very loud start to the morning. Take a look at this. Uh, it wasn't just the thunder and lightning and rain. We also had some hail from the storm that was just a little south of here. Take a look. This video of the hail was sent in by Maria Miller from Quero, Texas. You can see that hail pummeling her yard and shed as it falls to the ground early this morning. It's really something to see. And if we hang on here just a little bit, you'll see how big that those hailstones were right there. Wow. Large enough to fill up the palm of that hand there. And fortunately, we did not have a lot of that up here in San Antonio, mm -hmm. but we did get a lot of the rain and all that electrical lightning, too. Absolutely. This morning's thunderstorms brought heavy rain to San Antonio, so much that it flooded the lower levels of I-35. Take a look at this footage that we got from earlier today. This was around 10 o'clock on the lower levels near San Pedro. You can see city workers having to make Annually pump out the water from the road to clear it. They shut down the area in both directions, sending drivers on a detour. An early morning crash on Interstate 10 uh, claims the life of a woman. This after witnesses tell police the vehicle she was in drove off the access road and fell down to the highway. Take a look. SCPD officers at the scene say this happened around 4 15 out near the Dominion. They say uh, that the vehicle hit a barrier wall on the access road before falling 25 feet and landing on its roof. San Antonio firefighters had to cut the woman out of the vehicle, but were told she was pronounced dead at the scene. Her identity right now has not been released. And San Antonio firefighters worked to put out an attic fire caused by a lightning strike earlier this morning. This happened just before seven o'clock in the 8000 block of Widgeon Street near Cable Ranch Road. Firefighters said lightning during this morning's thunderstorm caused that fire in the attic. Luckily, there was no one home at the time of that fire and crews were able to get those flames out pretty quickly. Well, today is the start of National Crime Victims Rights Week, and a group of people who lost their loved ones to violence gathered to have their voices heard. The families and friends of murder victims met today at United Methodist Church to bring awareness to the unresolved cases still plaguing their lives. This event was supported by SAPD and Crime Stoppers. Law enforcement officers spoke about how they'll tackle these issues. Those who lost their loved ones to crime grieve together in solace, finding common ground with other survivors of violence. A huge support for us because um, other people don't understand it like another mom. And we know each other's hearts. And our hearts beat the same. Broken heartbeat. That was the mother of Aaron Rocha, who was murdered in 2016. Anyone with information regarding that murder or other fatal crimes can always call law enforcement or Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Despite the less than optimal weather, kids gathered at the Boeing Center in Techport to continue celebrating Fiesta. This was Fiesta de los Niños. It's recognized as the most technologically advanced Fiesta event for kids and families. Those who attended experienced traditional Fiesta fun with an upgrade. They had robots, drones, as well as opportunities to learn about cybersecurity and space exploration. The event was free except for the food and drink. That also included some live music and outdoor carnival rides as well as flight simulators. It's going to be an opportunity for them to see firsthand, to learn about all of the technologies that are happening on this campus and throughout San Antonio. The 20 year tradition continues going strong with partners like the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology showing the world of tomorrow to future generations. And don't forget to get your tickets for next Friday's Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau parades. You can join our exclusive KSAP party that gets you seats, food and drinks. And the best thing watching the parades bathrooms. You also get to hang out with us to make sure to scan that QR code on your screen for more information on how to get them as well as what to expect. And if you can't make it out all those events or you don't like crowds like me, you can watch it all from the comfort of your home. We've got you covered right here at KSA. You can watch all the parades, including the Texas Cavaliers River Parade tomorrow at 7. It'll be on all of our platforms like our website or KSAT Connect, probably our YouTube channel. Anywhere you stream, you'll be able to find it.
All right, heading to news across the world, countries from around the globe continue pulling their diplomats out of Sudan as war ravages the streets there. President Biden confirmed the U.S. military successfully evacuated U.S. embassy workers, but roughly 16,000 Americans are still waiting to be evacuated. ABC's Inez de la Cutera on how the deadly conflict has already claimed at least 400 lives, including one American. The fighting between the two warring military groups in Sudan is escalating as it enters its second week. U.S. military forces using two Chinook helicopters evacuated personnel from the American embassy overnight. President Biden confirmed the operation and said his administration would continue to assist Americans still trapped in Sudan. The Pentagon overnight said that they could maybe think about setting up a safe corridor between Khartoum and Port Sudan and that presumably using drones would allow the U.S. Navy to take people out by sea. On this week, Virginia Senator Mark Warner says the U.S. is working with international partners to evacuate Americans who are currently being told to shelter in place. Those individuals who are there on aid missions, there is actually a U.N. effort now to get people from Khartoum out over the land corridor. Saudi Arabia says it has evacuated more than 150 people from 12 countries. Those evacuees seen on Saudi state TV disembarking from a ship on Saturday. Many of those still in Sudan say conditions are deteriorating. There is no hope of survival. Everyone is just running hell to skate, you know, looking for shelter to survive. And uh, these, these, these people, they're fighting. It's like they, they don't value uh, human lives. Meantime, Pope Francis calling for peace. The pontiff offered prayers in St. Peter's Square, telling the crowd the situation remains grave. In de la Quintera, ABC News, London. So to come on the 5.30 news, the Texas Senate has passed a bill requiring classrooms to have the Ten Commandments displayed when that might go into effect if it becomes a state law. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Fiesta Gives Back through the King William Fair, the fun-filled family festival held every last Saturday of Fiesta. Thousands take part every year in the day-long event, which offers arts and crafts vendors, live music and dancing, a kid's play area, and delicious food and drinks all around. But the King William Fair is a party with a purpose. Proceeds go to the King William Association, a nonprofit organization working to preserve and protect the oldest residential historic district in Texas, as well as promote the unique culture cultural heritage of San Antonio. So come on out, grab some food, an ice cold drink, and relax under the shaded streets of King William. You'll have a great time while helping Fiesta give back. The Texas Senate has passed a bill requiring classrooms to display a poster or framed copy of the Ten Commandments. It called SB 1515. It mandates the size and shape of the commandments must be easily readable for everyone in the classroom. This is expected for elementary and middle schools and may come into effect at the beginning of the next school year in September if it becomes law. The Texas Senate also passed a measure to require prayer and Bible study in all public schools. All right, let's go outside here with live cam. Still holding on to the cloud cover, but it has generally been a much drier afternoon compared to what we saw earlier this morning with the soggy and stormy conditions. It will be chilly and, yes, a little breezy if you're stepping out for any of those Sunday evening plans. But generally, as we head into our Monday, a little bit drier than earlier this morning, but I do think some patchy drizzle will be possible. Still cooler than average. But we will start to see a warming trend take over by Tuesday and Wednesday. A few more rain chances still in the forecast after that. We'll get to those details after the break. Gosh, those storms were so loud and so bright. I thought my, my house was shaking. <laughs> Mine was shaking. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they were very electric. A lot of lightning associated with those thunderstorms. And again, we don't like to see the hail part of it or the damaging winds, but we do like to see the rainfall. We can get you a look at some of those rainfall totals since last night. 0.71 over in Pearsall. Check out our far western counties over an inch in both Del Rio as well as Eagle Pass. 0.44 in Uvalde. 0.33 in Lakey over an inch in 
Hilden out there in McMullen County here in Bear County, just under three quarters of an inch in Converse 0.44 officially over at SA International. So yes, more rainfall to just add on to that running total so far for the month of April. You can see where that cluster of thunderstorms is now off of the Texas coast, now pushing into the northwestern reaches of the Gulf of Mexico. We have really dried things out here across South Central Texas this afternoon, but still we have the cloud cover in place and it is still breezy. Earlier today we saw wind gusts upwards of about 25 to even 35 miles per hour in spots. Right now still seeing some of those wind gusts out of the northeast upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour here in San Antonio. Temperatures much cooler than where we should be for this time of year. A mixture of 50s and low to mid 60s, 61 in Converse, 63 in Stinson, 63 in Hondo, 54 though off to the northwest in the Los Maples area. As we head into the overnight hours, I do think we will see those temperatures fall into the low to mid 50s by wake up time Monday morning. So you will want the long sleeve stepping out for the morning drive and you also might want the umbrellas. We could find some areas of patchy drizzle out there tomorrow as well. Not going to be nearly as widespread or heavy though as what we saw earlier this morning around 55 degrees by 9 a.m. 57 by 11 a.m. Then as we head into your Monday afternoon, generally cloudy skies, temperatures topping off still in the cooler than average 60s for most of us. I do think tomorrow afternoon will also be a little bit more drier than the patchy drizzle expected tomorrow morning. A daytime high around 65 here in town, 64 in Bull Verde, just shy of 70 for places like Floresville, stretching over to Pleasanton out there in Atascosa County. As we head into Tuesday and Wednesday, that warming trend does take back over with daytime highs topping off in the 70s and eventually into the low 80s by midweek. But then we see the first of two fronts move in Wednesday night and into Thursday. That also does spark a scattered rain chance. Now I did mention the potential for some patchy drizzle into our Monday. You can see by 6 a.m. just some light showers possible, but still enough to maybe briefly need the windshield wipers out there for the morning commute. And then as we head into your Monday evening, especially by about 7 to 8 o'clock, then we'll start to see some additional light isolated showers move back into the picture. A 30% chance for a few more isolated showers to a storm on Tuesday. And then yes, we'll monitor that next scattered rain chance Wednesday night before pleasant conditions return on Friday for the Battle of Flowers, guys. Just in time. Yes. All right, Andrew. So what's next for the San Antonio Brahmas after losing in such heartbreaking fashion yesterday? I mean, first and foremost, they do not have a game moving forward. San Antonio will still host the XFL championship game for the better part of the players. They don't necessarily know this entire league is going through their offseason for the first time. So we don't know who's going to come back. We'll talk to quarterback Jack Cohn about that uncertain future. Plus, Coach Hallmark reached a huge personal milestone today. Got that too next. Our San Antonio Brahmas saw their inaugural season come to an end in the Alamo Dome yesterday on the wrong end of a heartbreaking 29-28 loss to the D.C. Defenders. The Brahmas finished 3-7 and seven overall and missed an opportunity to stay alive in the hunt for the playoffs. After struggling through the majority of the season, quarterback Jack Cohn ended on a strong note. He threw for 300 yards in both of the Brahmas' final two games and completed 75% of his passes. Now, after months of work, he and the rest of the Brahmas are heading into uncharted territory. The offseason in a fledgling League. I mean, nobody really knows what's going to happen as far as who's going to be back, who's going to be where, you know, how this league really works going forward. So just we don't know when we're going to see each other next. Um, so that's just super sad. But uh, we're going to cherish this last time we have with each other and uh, just try and enjoy every moment. The XFL championship game will still take place here in San Antonio in the Alamo Dome on May 13th. In the Arena League, our San Antonio Gunslingers are 3-0. On the road against the defending NAL champions Albany Empire, Arvell Nelson found Kali Rashad for a touchdown on the final play of the game to give San Antonio an improbable 55-53 victory. Nelson accounted for eight total touchdowns in the win. The Gunslingers take their undefeated mark into a bye week and will next head to Fayetteville, North Carolina on Sunday, May 7th. 
UTSA baseball rebounded this weekend and took two of three from Florida International in Miami. This morning, the Roadrunners held off the Panthers 9-8 in a renewal of last night's rain-postponed second game. The win marked the 30th of the season and the 100th in Pat Hallmark's time leading the program. That's right, in his fourth season at the helm, he's already led the team to 100 wins. This week during media availability, Hallmark was asked what made his coaching style so effective. That I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I try to be real with them. That's the one thing I try not to BS them. Um, it can be, being real with them sometimes means rough, but in the moment they don't always like it, but, but they get better and they like getting better. UTSA is now 30 and 10 on the season and will return home to host Houston Christian Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Let's head to the majors and after scoring 18 runs yesterday, what did the Rangers do for an encore today against Houston? How about another long ball? Bottom two, Robbie Grossman goes yard with a three run blast to left. Texas scores the first four runs of the game. They win again five to two to take the series. They are now 14 and seven on the season. Elsewhere, Astros going for the series sweep in Atlanta. Top of the ninth game tied at two. How about the rookie Corey Jolks driving a base hit right up the middle. Kyle Tucker scores the go ahead run. Astros pull away late to win it five to two in high school baseball o'connor sees control of the 29 6 say title race yesterday afternoon with a hard fought one nothing victory over stevens miguel bustamante went the distance on the mound and pitched a complete game shutout the panthers have only two district games remaining against sotomayor and holmes this week and they have picked up some valuable confidence with their win over the falcons but this game really is going to help us with that because now we feel like we're on top and we're going to keep that way. We were on a big hot streak there for a little bit, won 12 straight and then lost to Clark last Saturday. And I told the guys, I said, hey, you win 12 more, you're in round four. Um, and so we're just going to take it one day at a time and, you know, one game at a time. And I think I really feel like we're playing our best baseball at the right time here in you know, late April, getting into May. Meanwhile, the defending state champion O'Connor softball team wrapped up their regular season with an impressive 4-0 victory over Holmes yesterday morning. Even after losing some pretty significant players to graduation, the Panthers still finished 14-2 this season atop the 29-6A standings. Beginning of the year, like our seniors left, um, we like tried to be together, more together as a team because we had like little cliques. So I think like coming together as a team like really worked for us. I know like with a new group of girls, we had to adjust and I think we're doing good adjusting. The by district round of the high school softball playoffs kicks off this week and the state tournament begins on May 30th. We end with a stop by our Lady of the Lake for the San Antonio Area Association of Basketball Coaches Girls All-Star Game. 24 players representing 18 different schools divided into two teams under head coaches Natasha Benavides and Manasha Balagusi. There were definitely some fireworks though in the first half. East Central's Asia Prudhomme with the spin move gets the jumper to fall to put West up 10 to 8. Then a little later, Bernie's Jamie Reedy finds Janaya Perkins out of Highlands for the lay-in. Count it and one. It's 15 to 8 for Coach Benavides. But Team Agusi responds. Harlan's Layla Conley knocks down back-to-back -back three balls. The dark jerseys end up getting the win in this one, 93 to 88. We are back after the break. All right, cool and breezy conditions in store for Sunday evening plans. It'll be a chilly start tomorrow morning in the low to mid 50s with some areas of patchy drizzle, generally holding on to the cloud cover for the most part throughout the day. Highs topping off in the cooler than average mid 60s here in San Antonio. A couple of isolated showers and storms possible on Tuesday. A warming trend takes over. Then we'll monitor for our next front to move in Wednesday night. A few storms possible there as well, but then more sunshine is in store for the Battle of Flowers Parade on Friday and Saturday's looking pretty good as well, guys. Cool mornings all the way through looking good that's all of our time for now thanks for watching we'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. have a good evening we'll see you then